Well, welcome everybody to our official opening of the Pritzloff Conservation Center. Um, this has been a, a long process and it's uh, many of you uh, have contributed in many different ways and this is just a, a wonderful day for us uh, to um, just celebrate. Uh, I'm the uh, Jim Koopmans, I'm the current chair of the Board of Trustees. Um, we have a very, very uh, quality board that's uh, really uh, mission oriented and is very hard working. So I just want to thank the trustees. Um, at, at this point, uh, let me introduce uh, our executive director, uh, Dr. Steve Windhager. Uh, Steve is just a pleasure to work with and along with the staff has uh, brought us to this point. So Steve, thank you. I bribed Jim to say that I'm a pleasure to work with. Um, uh, <laughs> but I've got proof. I've got witnesses now. He can't take it back. Um, so, uh, Jim, thank you very much. And again, thank you to our board of directors, uh, the board of trustees that have worked so hard uh, and done so many things in the background uh, to make this day possible. Uh, the first thing I really have to do is say a bunch of thank yous because the truth is while our board of trustees has worked so hard, they are so not alone. This has been a community undertaking that we've been working on for, we'll just say 20 some years um, uh, to really have this come to fruition. Um, it certainly it's been going on since I've gotten here a little bit, uh, almost six years ago. Uh, but I, in particular, I want to thank our lead donors by name. Uh, that is uh, Mary Dell Pritzloff who passed away earlier this year. I'm so sad she wasn't able to join us here. Uh, but I'm glad to say that we have Ann here uh, one year ago, uh, that, that Ann's here to, to, um, to recognize the, the Pritzloff family. Uh, I want to also thank Ken and Shirley Tucker and uh, John and Martha Gabbert. Uh, Ken also passed away before we were able to see the building, but again, I'm so pleased that uh, Shirley was able to see it. She's already gone on a tour. Uh, she's not here today, but I want to thank her for, for doing that. Uh, everything she made. But beyond those lead donors, I also want to thank the more than 400 individuals and foundations that made contributions to this campaign that have made this possible. Um, and that effort was led by a whole team of volunteers to raise the money that took not only this building, but all the new garden spaces that we've been uh, put in place over the last couple years. Uh, and that team was led by uh, Dr. John Wyman and Dr. Edward Birch, who were the co-chairs of our Seed the Future campaign. Uh, there's Ed and John, we're, we're right behind. Um, I want to say thank you to the, both of them. I also want to thank the, the design team that's worked on this. Uh, they are many and numerous and too, too many to, to name, but I will mention Doug Singletary, who's been working on this project since 2001. Um, and so Doug, our architect, thank you very much for making this a reality today. Putting together such a complex project is also pretty difficult and takes a lot of, of, of concentration and awareness of the parts. And I want to thank Skipper Construction as our lead construction team for putting this together and all their subs who made this possible. So thank you, Skipper Construction. I also want to thank the staff that have been working tirelessly to make this happen and our volunteers. They have really been putting a, a lot of hours in to make this work. They came in early, they've, they've left late, and they've made it really come together in a way that really uh, has impressed us all. And I think you can all see the potential as this site really grows in for what it's going to be, not just in the building, but also the gardens that surround it and what we're going to be able to do here. Um, I, I think a special thanks should go out to our horticultural team who really did move mountains to make this happen. I also want to thank many of you who are our neighbors and, and uh, community members who have put up with us during our construction process, during uh, long uh, months of hearings and what have you. So I want to say thank you for everything you've done and for helping us get to this day and, and achieve this. And I also want to thank all the elected officials who are here. We've got Salud Carbajal, uh, uh, Doss, is, um, Doss Williams is going to be joining us, as well as uh, Leora Goodman from Senator, uh, uh, State Senator Jackson's office for joining us here today. With that, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Ed Birch, who is the uh, co-chair of our Seed the Future campaign, to say a few words. 
Well, thank you very much, Steve. What a special day this is. And it's very special for me as I look out at all of you and as I watched many of you come in. And one of the many things that struck me about this place is the loyal and committed following that it has. You folks are deep in your love of this place, and, and I can't imagine anyone feeling a greater sense of satisfaction than all of you as this wonderful day uh, has, has, is happening and the ribbon uh, is, is about to be cut. For me personally, uh, it's been an exceptional journey and, and uh, as a part of uh, this team. The opportunity to work with my colleague, uh, John Wyman, who we've known each other for many years as we struggled with uh, uh, the goes and not goes of this campaign, but also the opportunity to work with Dr. Steve. Uh, Steve Windhager uh, has been a blessing for many of us as he arrived here, and what, a, what an incredible person uh, he was to work with. He and his colleagues uh, do an exceptional job in leading this, this place. And for me uh, personally uh, as well, uh, uh, it was a, uh, an exceptional journey to be here in the early morning hours as we met, we meeting many of you who served on our leadership team, to be here in the early morning hours as the sun was coming up and the mist was beginning to, to move away and to look out at that mountain behind me here. What a special, what a special feeling that was to be able to smell the smells, the flowers in bloom, and the moisture as it hits the, uh, the leaves and the trees. And to be able to sense all of that was very special for me as well. The opportunity to see the smiles on the faces and the feeling of contentment by the visitors, the children and the adults as they wandered through the place and enjoyed, and enjoyed the moment. All of those were just so special memories for me and I wanted to share that with you because I know you all have a special affection uh, for this place more than simply a building. Well, what about the building? It's an extraordinary facility, named for two exceptional people. Mr. and Mrs. Pritloff have been longtime partners in this venture here at the Garden. So how fitting it is to have this exceptional facility named for them. What it is not, what it is not, the building is not just a beautiful building with exceptional views. It is not just a building that will be a model of sustainability, likely to be LEED gold uh, premium awarded facility. What it is, it is all of that and more. It's a building that will be a facility for learning, for growing, and for having fun. It's an exceptional facility that doesn't just do one thing or two things or three things. It's a building that has a herbarium. It's a building that has laboratories. It's a building that has a seed garden. It's a building that has a classroom. It's a building that has offices that indeed do function. And it also has a wonderful private event space for private parties and gathering, an opportunity to bring more and more people into this rarefied environment here on, on the hill. So it's been a wonderful journey for me, and this building is just an exceptional facility, and I know that it will serve many, many purposes and many, many people for many years to come. For me also, uh, it's an opportunity to, uh, uh, to be able to be here with all of you who have been such strong supporters. And the building would not have been possible without the generous support of hundreds of people, and Steve mentioned the numbers, and they're just dramatic. Large gifts, small gifts, in between gifts, gifts from the heart, gifts for pleasure, gifts because it's important to give. Lastly, aren't we, aren't we fortunate? Aren't we fortunate to be in a community that cares about the important things, that cares about meaningful things, that cares about a facility such as this one, cares about history, cares about science. We're blessed in many, many ways, aren't we? So as we open this building, I hope that we all will be mindful of the many people who've cared for this place and for the many people who will be coming in the future to be able to enjoy this extraordinary facility and this exceptional place. Thank you all for your support. Thanks, Let me, Doug, let me keep this one.
your paper. All right. Uh, thank you, Ed. Thank you very much for the stirring words. And again, thank you for all that you and John and, and the rest of the campaign committee did to make this day a reality. It uh, gives me great pleasure now to introduce the Reverend Ann Symington, who is going to speak a little bit on behalf of the Pritzloff family. Good morning. It is, as you might imagine, incredibly amazing for me to be standing here having been a part of the lineage and history of this building coming to fruition. I'd like to think, I was talking with Fife on the phone who is doing his good thing and hiding out from the sun over here. Um, I like to think it started with my grandmother Pritzloff in Wisconsin. She was a passionate gardener. And I know that that's where dad got his passion for plants and conservation and gardening. And any of you who knew my father knew that he was a passionate gardener. And any of you who ever received vegetables or flowers from him were presented with his gifts of the heart. And that was the best he had to give. And he gloried in it. And I miss that. I miss those vegetables and flowers, but now we have this wonderful building, the vision of which has been in development for quite some time and has really truly been a family effort as my father also tasked my husband with taking on the mantle um, of moving this whole vision at the garden forward. So it has been a work of love for all of us. And, and my mother, um, who loved dad very much, did this to honor his passion. And I think there's nothing better than that. And I really thank you all for being here today. I thank everyone who's had anything to do with making this day happen and this building a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Thank you so much, Ann. Uh, and now it's my great pleasure to introduce someone who's been part of this process as well for a very long time, and that is Supervisor Salud Carbajal. Supervisor. Thank you. Thank you. Ed and John, I have another campaign you could help me with. <laughs> Let me say what a privilege it is to be here today. Uh, I believe we... Uh, this project came before the Board of Supervisors in uh, 2010 or 2011? It got resolved. I think it started. 2010. It got res but resolved is the key word. Um, first, let me offer my thanks to John and, and Ed for their extraordinary leadership in bringing the community together. Uh, and this is the result of, of that effort. You know, for many years, uh, anytime you have a, a treasure, uh, like this wonderful garden in a neighborhood, there's, it, it lends itself to natural tensions. And, and how we resolve those is, at the end of the day, what's important. And I think that this building today not only reflects the labor of love, the investment uh, that many people, the Prislaw family and others, have made, um, but it also reflects the harmony that we've achieved uh, for this community. Uh, Dr. Steve Winhager has been uh, an extraordinary force in that regard as well, in making sure that there's a symbiotic harmony with the surrounding neighborhood. And today, uh, I think this culminates in that success, uh, not only for all of us as a community, but for future generations. And I'm just glad that I was a part of, a small part of it in county government uh, where we were able to achieve a 5-0 vote. And if you know the Board of Supervisors, that's, that could be very challenging <laughs> sometimes. And uh, again, I just want to congratulate uh, the Pritzlaw family, Governor Symington. I know you're over here. You kind of look a little CIA Secret Service back there. <laughs> I don't know what to make of you. Um, but I just want to thank everyone. And um, we are so extremely privileged, as Ed said, uh, to live in a community that cherishes these wonderful um, treasures. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I come here on occasion with my family, and I just pinch myself 
what an extraordinary community we have and what an extraordinary gift we're giving to future generations. Thank you so much. Now it's my pleasure to get you guys out of the hot sun very shortly because we are going to move directly from this point into our ribbon cutting. Uh, as folks are coming up to, to help us cut the ribbon, I, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, everyone that's come out today and to tell you to stick around afterwards because we are going to have refresh tours of the new building, tours of the gardens. Every 15 minutes or so, the tours will be leaving from this exhibit space, which we're going to open up right after we cut the ribbon. So with that, I want to let's get my list of everyone that's going to be coming up. I want to ask Reverend Ann Symington. I want to ask our, our chair, Jim Koopmans. I want to ask Dr. Ed Birch, uh, Dr. John Wyman, uh, Salud Carbajal, Assemblymember Doss Williams, uh, Doug Singletary, and Paul Wyskowski, uh from Skipper Construction. Go ahead and come on up and help us cut the ribbon. This seems appropriate. Right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> what do you do with me? Have you got some photos of you still posing? And we'll begin uh, refreshments and tours and, and all of that.